What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hustle with Jesse W. And today we're going to go over two things. We're going to go over what an ETF is, how to buy it, actually three things. And we're going to go over one specific ETF I am extremely interested in. Check it out. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Don't mind the background. I'm just finishing up a day of day trading here up a couple hundred dollars, a little bit over two hundred dollars on uh, some Tesla options. I traded uh, real nice, real nice day. Could have been much better, much better. But day trading isn't easy. It's just really not. And just because I day trade doesn't mean that's the only type of investment I do. I like real estate and I like long term investing. I have just heavily started to get interested in long term investing. I've always messed around with it a little bit here and there, but I've never been consistent until the last year. OK, so from last year to this year, um, actually a little bit over a year now, actually, I've been uh, consistently uh, long term investing every month. OK, not a whole lot of money, just a few hundred dollars. Uh, but as I am uh, progressively getting more familiar with it, I'm going to continue increasing that uh, as time progresses. And what I mean when I say long term investing, I'm not talking about five years. I'm not talking about 10. In my case, I'm talking about a little bit over 20 years. I'm investing with a goal of a little bit over 20 years of long term investing consistently over the course of a monthly basis, you know, over those 20 some odd years. Now, with that said, we're going to go over one new investment I have found that I am very interested in. But before we do, we're going to go ahead and jump into the actual basics of it all on it's a, it's an ETF. We're going to find out what an ETF is because you might not know what an ETF is. OK, now, before we do that and we jump into all this, I want you to do me one quick favor and that's smash the like button for me. Or if you don't want to smash it because you might break your phone screen, gently tap that like button and the subscribe button for me and subscribe to the channel. I post daily, basically, um, at least one video uh, on a day trading recap where I go over what I traded. I also post videos like this regarding long term investing. I post videos about college. I post videos about real estate. I mean, I post videos about basically anything that has to do with personal finance. That's what my channel is about. And it's always been about uh, it's also with Jesse W. So I go over everything that I am currently doing, have done in the past, or will be doing here in the future. And that's what I surround my channel about. Now, today we're going to go over a, sp a specific ETF I found that I'm going to start investing in. And but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and go over what an ETF is. If you're new and you don't know what an ETF is, an ETF is nothing more than an exchange traded fund. OK, <coughs> it works a lot like like a mutual fund in a sense. You know, a mutual fund has a basket of uh, holdings within it. An ETF mimics a specific market, basically. So like the SPY is an ETF, etc. It's going to mimic the, the market. There's ETFs that mimic the entire stock market in its entirety. Um, and then there's ETFs that mimic specific, uh, you know, sectors like like uh, the S&P, like the NASDAQ, etc. OK, so uh, what they'll do is they'll go ahead and mimic the movement of that sector or, or of that exchange rather uh, based off of the underlying assets in that exchange. So what we're going to go over here is the ETF QYLD. QYLD is an is an ETF that I am very, very much interested in. And we're going to go over all its specs here. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit easier to read so we can go over this ETF. ETF is Q. I mean, this ETF is QYLD. OK, and it's based off of the NASDAQ. As we know, NASDAQ has a lot of tech companies in it and technology is by far. We all know this is, is the way of the future. Technology is just going to get more and more advanced. We think we might have hit a plateau. Some people say it all the time in technology, but that's nowhere near the truth. I mean, reality is, in my opinion, that technology has tremendous upside over the course of the next 20 to 50 years. OK, so I really like QYLD because it's surrounding itself around the top technology companies. OK, so QYLD QYLD right now trades at twenty three dollars and eighty two cents. OK, and we can see here uh, it pays out a dividend. Very important. Most ETFs like these are not paying out dividends as far as technology companies go, because technology companies tend not to pay dividends. You really don't see that that much. I mean, with the exception of a few. Right. 
you don't see that like for, for example tesla you know uh, that doesn't pay out uh, a dividend if i'm not mistaken um amazon doesn't pay out a dividend right apple i believe pays out a, a nice dividend but not all technology in fact most technology companies do not pay out dividends but this etf does pay out a dividend and it's basically all about technology so that's what caught caught my attention all right it had technology and it had dividend and as you know via my my previous video uh, on long-term investing i'm really looking at dividend paying out etfs and stocks so when i found an etf that actually paid out a dividend it immediately caught my attention so uh, let's dig in a little bit here and take a look at what qyld is all about so yield from the Nasdaq 100 <laughs> has a little question mark. That's the promise embedded in the very ticker QYLD. Historically, investors came to the Nasdaq for growth, which is what we like about technology companies. You know, these stocks are growth stocks, but generally growth stocks do not pay out dividends because they're just constantly looking for more growth. They're not looking to pay out from their profits. So uh, came from the, to the Nasdaq for growth, not yield. While the dynamic may be shifting as tech giants mature and begin paying dividends, the fact remains that pure play S&P 500 funds offer more yield than plain vanilla NASDAQ 100 funds uh, like QQQ. That's another ETF that mimics NASDAQ and that doesn't pay a dividend. Enter QYLD. That's where QYLD comes in, right? Because it's going to come in and it matches QQQ basically because it's, it has NASDAQ exposure, but it earns income that pays you in dividends by selling call options. So by it selling call options and making an income, an actual income, it passes this off to investors net of fees, okay? So covered call ETFs are hardly new, but QL, QYLD is the only fund to apply it to the NASDAQ. So we know that it's not something new, you know, selling covered calls, but it's new in the NASDAQ via this specific ETF right so expect a, gen a generally less volatile return pattern from uh, qyld relative to qqq investors have largely ignored the fund to date however use great care trading and monitor the asset levels also note that the fund's pr pr prospective allows it allows a bit of leverage the fund rebranded the change its name from recon capital nasdaq 100 covered call ETF, that's a mouthful, to Horizon NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF on February 28th, 2017. That's when the name change came about, okay? And we went to QLYD, QYLD, golly. So now we know what QYLD is. It's an ETF that trades or sells covered calls in order to make income to pay out dividends. So not only are you gonna have the growth from all the stocks that it, you know, it mimics, it follows, it holds, you're not, you're going to have all that growth. Plus you're going to have the income from dividends. Okay. Which is not found on any other NASDAQ ETF. Now let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper here and let's take a look at its history. Okay. Let's go to max. And we see here 2014, uh, this, you know, when it was, basically at his old name it was trading up here in 26 dollar area you know it's pulled back and it's pulled back as low as 20 dollars and right now it's at 24 bucks so it's basically in the middle of this channel it's in the middle of this channel from 20 to 26 dollars not a bad little area here uh for me personally to start investing into this for the long term because remember i'm investing in this and i don't care if it goes to 15 bucks next year i'm going to buy more and I'm holding this 20 years, you know, down the line. Who knows? I might even pass this off probably to my kids in the future, right? So that's the whole point of this QLD for me specifically. Now let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper in here and let's see where it's invested. QLD is 98.63% invested in the United States as expected, okay, with 1.15 invested in China and 0.23% invested in the Netherlands. So this is, you know, awesome to see. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Now, what sectors is this stock, I mean, well, this ETF really focusing on, right? That's the next thing we want to see. So we have here the top 10 sectors it's focusing on. Let me grab a little drink of water, guys. Do me that a quick favor and smash the like button because this video, <laughs> it's taking me a while to put together. Technology is 63.26% 
of the sector of, of, of the basket of sectors this thing follows okay so technology <coughs> excuse me and that's what we want to see we want to see well me specifically i was looking for an etf that had a lot of technology companies in it and paid a dividend as well and i found it here so here they have 63 percent. so it's 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 a risky etf because we know technology companies are risky i don't think personally that they're as risky as biotechs but they are definitely risky so i know there's risk in this etf right now consumer cyclicals it's it's got 20 percent. healthcare seven percent consumer non-cyclical 4.36 industrials uh 3.2 and then everything else that's left here is under one percent so what companies is it holding if it's if the top 10 sectors we have 63 percent over 63 percent of it being technology what technology companies are we holding here right we want to make sure they're established companies that that actually uh have a track record right because that's how we're going to feel safe after all we don't want to feel too dangerous in a, in a long-term investment so apple is their number one holding at 11.98 percent that is really good microsoft another you know uh, like long standing company 10.8 percent amazon which we all know is beasting 7.9 percent all very strong companies facebook okay now we're getting a little riskier but it's only 4.5 percent of the portfolio of the underlying portfolio alphabet which as we all know is google is 4.35 percent honestly i personally would like to see alphabet up here and it be apple microsoft amazon alphabet then facebook but that's just me i'm not a professional financial advisor i'm not a professional trader i'm not a professional investor that's just what i would like to see but hey i i, I like the the profile so far then we got alphabet inc a class a 4.3 intel corporation 2.8 comcast that's cool to see 2.3 cisco that's a good company 2.2 and pepsico 2.16 i don't see you know pepsi as a tech company obviously but nonetheless it's nice to see it in there along with whatever else they might have that is going to kind of like balance out any huge drops and some of these other tech companies you know so let's see here. The issuer of QYLD, Mireille Asset Global Investments. Let's click on them and let's see a little bit about them. So now we know that Mireille, I hope I'm not pronouncing that incorrectly, Assets Global Investments is you know the one that's the issuer here and we're going to read a little bit about him with 72 etfs traded in the united states markets Mireille asset global investments etf gather total assets under management of 12.72 billion dollars i like that i like that they have a that they have a lot of money under their management it shows people have confidence in the in the etf and i like that you know it's like it's like when you're trading and you see uh there's a lot there's a big dip, but then buyers step in real good and with strong bids. It's showing you that there's confidence, right? So the average expense ratio is 0.61%. So that's what it's going to cost, uh, you know, as far as fees. That's not bad. Mirai Asset Global Investment ETFs can be found in the following asset classes, equity, asset allocation, fixed income, and alternatives. All right, let's read a little bit more about them. Let's see here. The largest Murray Asset Global Investment ETF is the global... Okay, so they have various ETFs. Uh, this one right here, which is BOTS, B-O-T-Z, they have $1.54 billion in assets on that one. Let's scroll down here and let's take a look at some of this company's top ETFs. So POTX, CHIK... CHIC, LIT, um, that's some of their top. Let's take a quick look here. Top creations, you know, they have MLPX, MLPA, QYLD, which is the one that we're looking at. Let's see here. Let's keep scrolling. These are some of their top losers. QDIV, minus 56%. That's not nice. And here we are with all of their uh etfs or at least yeah there's four pages of etfs here so let's take a look and let's find out where qyld is standing on this giant list of etfs 
So we know bots, BOTZ, is their biggest holding at 1.54 billion under management. Then MLPA is another ETF they have, which is 1.19 billion. And then here comes QILD at a number three with $970 million being, you know, their, their, the bulk of, of the assets that they, that they hold in QILD. So that's nice to see that it's in their top three. So it means it's performing well. They are paying attention to it, you know, because it's in their top three for sure. So I like those two things right there. Now that's four more, you know, pages of different ETFs that they, that they manage here, obviously. But all we care about currently is QYLD. So now let's go right back to QYLD and let's continue reading a little bit about it. Let's find out here um, what we already know what their top 10 holdings are. Now let's keep digging around here and let's see here it is distribution yield 9.73%. Now I like that. I like that a lot. A 9.73% yield on the dividends. So that's friggin' awesome right there. I'm not gonna lie, that is impressive. Let's keep digging a little bit more here. So we know they have uh, the number of holdings within this ETF is 105 different companies. So that's real nice to know because you're diversified, you know, over a, a good amount of companies. That's, that's the beauty of diversification. Um, and let's see here. Now let's go over here to Yahoo. Let's go to Yahoo Finance. Let's type in QYLD. And let's take a look. Again, we see the dividend yield is 9.83%, so that's great. We go to dividends only and we apply. And now we can see here what they're paying. Now, the other thing with them is they pay your dividends monthly. That right there is awesome because you got a monthly paycheck from them. You know, or obviously not a paycheck in the mail, but you get your dividends from them every month. It's like a little paycheck every month. So you can see here they were paying 21 cents a share in January of last year, 18 cents a share in February, 20 cents in March, 17 in April, 21 in May, 21 in June, 17 in July, 22 in August, 17 in September, 17 in October, 19 in November. 16 in December and back to 19 cents in January of this year, 2020. So that's what they're paying you per share that you own, which is not bad at all because it's on a monthly thing. So let's say you own um, 100 shares of QYLD, okay? You own 100 shares. That's not uh, something that's like unheard of. 100 shares, pretty, pretty conservative. You own 100 shares of this stock. I mean of this ETF, and you're getting an average of about 19 cents per share, okay? So that's $19 a month. That's $228 in dividends a year. Obviously, it doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, but you're going to build, I'm going to build a position in this over an extended period of time. So it'll get to the point where, you know, it'll be a few hundred bucks, if not a thousand or more per month that I'll be making on my money via dividends on just this one ETF over the course of a long period of time, obviously, as I build out the position. Now, I could just throw $10,000 at this and boom, right? But no, I want to build the position over a period of time very slowly uh, in my dividend portfolio. And definitely QYLD is going to be front and center as the number one ETF or the number two ETF that I'm going to be investing in uh, for dividends as far as growth goes because I want to have growth and I want to have dividends. And technology to me is like the way of the future, right? So I think it has a trifecta of everything I'd be looking for in an ETF that has dividends. But again, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm no financial expert. I'm not telling you to go out and buy this or to put your life savings in this. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, which is very conservative. And I would always suggest that you research and speak with an actual financial advisor if you wanted to invest heavily into any of these things, okay? So that's it. That's the video for today on this specific ETF. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other ETFs that you're super like, like pumped up about and invest in drop it in the comment section below and let me know remember to smash the like button for me subscribe to the channel if you haven't and i'll catch you on the next one